Yeah, yeah, lots of things going on nowadays, aren't there? You've got uh, Unreal Engine uh, 5.2, the Unreal State, and uh, all of that, and it makes you wonder, is it all real? Is it really happening? I think it is, but, you know, it's, it seems a bit unreal, doesn't it? Anyway... Uh, welcome to today's uh, video, which is sort of a continuation tutorial from my previous uh, Ember Gen VDB uh, tutorials. Uh, you'll notice uh, behind me over there, I have got a uh, interesting, you know, sort of a fire thingy explosion. Uh, that's in Unreal Engine, and it runs, you know, it, uh, it's being affected by the um, directional light. Just, just wait, can you? Uh, where do I need to go? Yeah. This way, you can see it, right? You can see the directional light right there. Uh, you can see it, and um, if I move, you're able to you're able to see that, right? I'm sure you're able to see that. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, if you want to know how to, if you want to learn how to bring the uh, VDB explosion from Embergen into Unreal Engine and actually play it and make it look in Unreal Engine just like it does in Embergen, then watch this tutorial and you'll able you'll you'll be able to learn just that. Um, so yeah, um, now. Please consider watching my previous tutorial about how to import VDBs from Embergen into Unreal Engine. That shows you how to basically export them. But that sort of, you know, the import into Unreal Engine applies to any other VDB. So you'll learn in there how to get the plugin for Unreal Engine, which is very straightforward and very simple. How to install it, how to get the VDB imported, and how to use it in the time in the sequence and all that. But I sort of partially show you some of that anyway in here. I'll show you how to export out of Embergen and how to import in Unreal and quickly add it to a sequence and how to set up the material and everything to make it run. Now, if you want to support the Argani Ar 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 Arganian's Puzzle Box uh, platform, please consider purchasing one of my projects from ArtStation, Gumroad, Patreon, Creo, whatever, YouTube membership. And uh, yeah, you'll get access to, to those projects and you'll also be supporting me to buy more coffee, to make more content. So please, uh, consider that and if you're also if you're interested in getting vdbs from a from from a from another creator that makes some fantastic looking vdbs in houdini that you do nebulas smoke fire all clouds all sorts of things then consider looking at pixel lab the description is in the, in the link uh, below sorry the link is in the description below it is a referral link from me to them which would help the channel if you end up uh, buying any of their projects but they are spectacular so please consider having a look uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's jump straight into Embergen and get this show going. Oh, coffee now. Okay, now we've got Embergen opened, and uh, I've got myself here a scene which I like to call as basically a carpet tunnel. So let me just uh, deactivate some things like the skybox in here so we can just see the carpet tunnel. Uh, if I press um, space right now, you'll be able to see the animation, which is basically this sort of explosion that's happening on this side traverses this way and then goes up like that which is quite a simple thing to do because you know you can actually uh check to see what's driving all of this so you know if we go back to the to you know square one and we just started to drag this over here you, you'll notice that there's a sphere which you can see over here this sphere traverses towards the center of the image where it sort of like disappears and during that time there's also this sort of sheath of uh of you know this plane over here that's also traversing like that all the way to the center and then it sort of rolls back up and if you if we then play it we can see what that means so you've got the sphere going forward and you've got the sheath following it and this it, it, you know uh, emits this sort of explosion and that goes up in the air and then dissipates and expires so this is set, this is capped at a frame rate of, uh, sorry, frames, 320 frames. So that's how much this entire animation plays out until it basically ends and you can sort of restart it. So it restarts on its own the way it's set up right now. 
Um, so this is something that's a modification of uh, something that already comes with Ember Gen 1.0, uh, in which I made as like this carpet field sort of explosion. And it's all volumetric sort of uh, driven. There's no particles. It's just that volume that's doing it. Now, in whatever sort of software you're going to be bringing this, you will not be getting this sort of detail that you're seeing up here like that. So let me just make it bigger. You can see that there's uh, quite a nice sort of shading in there going on. You're not going to see that specifically because this is using a technique that's available only in um, in this particular version of Embergen or, or any, you know, of the ones that are coming after this, which is called, uh, you know, in rendering, it has, um, sorry, not, uh, was it in rendering? Yeah, it's got Ray March stepping. So if we actually played this animation again and you can see it over here, let's stop it. If I deactivate Ray March, that's kind of how it will look in other engines. But this is how it looks like in here with this Ray March sharpening, which you, obviously you can then play around with. But that's uh, beside the point. What's uh, important for us is that we're able to export this VDB. So whatever you're seeing this volume processing right here, we're going to have a VDB uh, exit node. So we can just drag in there and select the export VDB. Now I can save this, you know, I've got the directory set up, which is quite easy, the file name and how many frames I want to export. So this is pretty much uh, straight, um, you know, straightforward. Anybody that uses Embergen or has any, in, you know, incentive to use it then to get to this stage it's just load up a project do whatever you want to do in it make sure it's a volume and not a not a particle so that means that the your emitter has to just be as i said a volume emitter rather than be a um, a, a particle emitter but that's quite easy because you know when you look over here and you look for emitters you've got volume and particles we're using the volume one okay so any explosion that does that, you can you can do it. And, and you get the volume, the VDB export. So then you get to this stage and you export whatever frame rate, frame you want from the timeline in here. And these are just key nodes, the, you know, key, key points that shows uh, all of these sort of driven elements to create this explosion. Now we want to bring this and, and use it in Unreal Engine directly. So how do we do that? So after we've exported, we're able to jump in Unreal and import the VDB sequence uh, based on obviously uh, having that, you know, the plugin for the Nano VDB, the Open VDB plugin. And then we're able to bring the sequence in Unreal Engine and use it in there directly, you know, be able to play it. But we've got to do the setup to make it look exactly like it does in Embergen. And that's no easy feat to, to achieve if you don't know what you're doing, really. Here I've got a very basic Unreal Engine scene with just a few things set up. And I have got my plugin enabled, um, which obviously if you watch the tutorial in which I show you how to get this plugin, uh, you'll be able to quickly see how to do that. It's very simple. This works in 5.1.1. I'm sure it will be upgraded to 5.2 soon, but that's what we've got. Uh, so with the plugin enabled, I was able to import these uh, two VDBs. Again, in my previous video, I show you exactly how to do the import, but uh, basically it's quite simple, quite straightforward. You know, um, it, when you when you import, when you drag it into the into the content folder, you get these questions. You can bring in the density and the temperature. By the way, that's exactly what I've exported out of Embergen. So in Embergen, I had the density, flames, and other such things. For this specific purpose, I've exported density and temperature because that's what we're going to use to make this effect look just like an Embergen. And then the quantitization type, I've used an FP4 and obviously it already shows me in here that I've got a sequence between zero, frame zero and frame 319, which I got out of Embergen. Now, these are the two things, the density and the temperature. So in a previous tutorial, I've shown you guys how to basically use the principled VDB volume. But for this particular thing, we're going to use the other one. So up here, we're going to type in VDB and we've got VDP material actor and principal actor. Both of these will work, but the principal actor is mo mostly if you want very high quality detail VDB but with not a lot of, um, or, you know, artistic direction onto it as much as you have on the VDB material actor. But this one is very useful. The principal actor is very useful if you're going to do something like, uh, you know, use pass tracing. But we're going to use the material actor instead. So I'm just going to drag it into the scene over here. And then I've got a few options. So I've got the density, the temperature. For some reason, something was already preset. But anyway, I've dropped that in there. I'm going to call it test. VDB just so we know which one it is over here and then I can drag the density and I'm also going to drag the temperature 
okay now if we go down here where we've got the um uh, playback we should be able to uh, you know do something with this offset so we do the offset and we can see how the effect sort of plays if we would be you know play you know using a playback right now on this that's how the vdb would sort of play out it's exactly what we've got now this is really good because we can sort of freeze this uh probably around here and now we can start playing around with its settings to get it to look like what it does in um, in embergen so again in the temperature you want to put the temperature and in the density you want to put the density like we've spoken you've got the material in here we're not going to touch that for now we're going to look at the other settings down here so the local step size you want to put that down to one and that's for performance um uh, sort of like you know like, like the closer you get to zero the performance decreases but we also get a better looking vdb i would recommend you say at around uh one and then the shadow step multiplier you can do a one on that as well increase the jittering to one so you don't really have any jitters and the volume um that's gonna be quite nice and then you've got some other options in here like tri trilinear sampling click that as it improves the quality of the vdb and then if you want to the skylight to have an effect on the vdb itself as well press that but just be mindful that this is going to have a quite a steady impact on your performance you see with without it and with it is quite a big difference when you do that now bear in mind that this vdb is affected by the by the light by lumen and whatnot so it will change based on that it actually even blocks the sun which i'm going to show you in just a little bit so let's just leave it around there the next thing we want to do is play around with the density multiplier so we'll put that to maybe like a uh, hundred okay so that's at 100 is quite dense as you can see but we can still uh, see the sun so maybe let's try a thousand so at a thousand we cannot see the sunlight anymore okay so we'll leave it at a thousand for now we'll leave the albedo where it is the ambient and the isotropy where they are what we're interested in is the black body so we can either use a physically based black body which is not necessarily something that i would recommend because you're not going to be able to make it to look like an uh, ember gen with a physical a physically based black body at least not that i've you know i haven't managed to do it so i'm gonna instead uh, you know untick it and then in here i've got a black body curve atlas and a black body curve so I'm going to be using the curve atlas and uh, color curve that I've done in the, my previous tutorial. I showed you exactly how to create these and how to use them. But basically the atlas contains the curve. So if you double click the atlas, you'll be able, oh, sorry, not that, um, you'll be able to see. So in this atlas, I've got the curve, that curve from there, I've got it added. This is quite simple to do. And this curve has a simple, you know, that's like this gradient. Obviously, you can play around with other gradients if you want, if you want to make it in different colors and so on. So I'm going to drop the curve. Uh, sorry, I'm going to drop the atlas and then I'm going to drop the curve in there. And you can see the color has now changed to kind of reflect what that uh, curve looks like. But it's not, it's very uniform. uniform. Uh, <coughs> sorry. So that's not what we want. Uh, but we can get the look that we want by decreasing the temperature multiplier. So this has to actually be quite low. So we'll try 0 0.003. And you can already see that it's starting to shape up a bit better. But we'll do a 0 0.0003 like that. Uh, this might be too much as well. So maybe a 0 0.001. You can also increase the intensity, which just lights up this, you know, makes the fire look a lot more real. And maybe we need to decrease this intensity even further, maybe something like that. So wherever the black body is showing up is very intense, but the temperature multiplier is quite low. So now if you go and scrub on here, you can see how this sort of starts. Uh, maybe it's a bit too strong, so... Maybe we want to put that to maybe like a 50 or actually, no, I think that's okay. We just probably need to play around with the gradient a bit. Um, no, something that's too much. Yeah, maybe something like that. So then when you do the playback, you'll notice how this sort of plays, right? That's exactly, you know, an ember gen. That's pretty much how it does that. But let's just really see it in real time instead of like this. So what I'm going to do, I've got a sequence over here. Uh, just a normal sequence that i've got into the level so i'm going to take the test vdb and drop it into the sequence and then i'm going to press press the plus sign and then add the vdb sequence track make sure that it's sort of 
you know, my timeline ends at the sequence of, of 320. So then when I press play, we can now see this sequence playing in real time. And that's really cool because you can now see, you know, every time the sequence restarts, we will have our explosion play. And by the way, if we go here, you can note, you'll notice that the sunlight is also affected by this, which is quite beautiful. I really enjoy that. I really like the fact that it does that. You can see how nice that plays. Uh, now with the VDB selected, there's some other settings that we can do in here. Um, so let me just stop the animation maybe around here. And we can have a look, get a bit closer to it. It's, you know, the definition on it is quite good. Uh, by the way, if we, obviously, if we lift the light, you can, you'll notice how the VDB changes just by lifting that light and changing it a bit. So that's really cool. Um, and now we can actually go into the material. Or we can press the improve skylight if you want uh, better looking. So you'll notice without it, that's what it looks like without. And this is what it looks like with. So the improved skylight already adds so much more to this, um, you know, just by doing that. And it actually plays back better when it's uh, the, the light is stronger outside rather than when it's not. Um, and then we can have a look at, you know, the material itself. So we can double click that and have a look what we can do with the material. So in here, you can actually play with the displacement of this by, you know, you can know, hopefully you'll be able to notice it, even though I'm sure... Um, you know, the compression from YouTube might not help, but you can see as I change this around, it does change the shape of the of the of the smoke a bit. Uh, so that's what that does. And you can obviously, you know, increase or the if you decrease saturation, you get less displacement. If you increase it, you get more. This is just a simple sort of shading technique. It's nothing for real. And you can also add some emissive, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but you can do that if you want to author uh this uh, further so maybe you want to have like a maybe like a reddish smoke rather than just simple black smoke and then you also got the scattering color which you can play around with as you do by the way this will decrease the density of your material so this will look less dense now than it did but again it helps you to be able to author this material even further based on what um, sort of effect you were going for. So you, you can notice how these sort of changes when you do this, right? Um, but yeah, that's that's really all, all there is to it to get this running. Uh, this is occupying probably about four or five gigabytes of space. So they're, they're very intensive. I would definitely recommend you using these, these on an SSD if you can, because if you put them on any other normal hard drive, you might have issues with running these in real time as opposed to running them uh, in an offline renderer where that doesn't really matter because it's frame by frame based but in here it's it's real time so you need the speed yeah so that's how this looks like it's really really cool um, and the principled shader one kind of sort of functions in the same way but uh, it doesn't react to the directional light unless you're using patch tracing but it does look nicer than this if you're if you're if you're you know if you want to actually go through the process of rendering it uh as normal you know how the past tracer would uh you can see my performance sometimes is, is sort of taking a hit on this uh purely if i get too close to the effect so i wouldn't recommend you doing that these are effects made for movies or cinematics and stuff like that i wouldn't use them in real time unless you go for like a local step size of maybe like a 10 or something like that and you know uh actually yeah something like that i think that would probably be better so yeah we can get a lot closer now and it runs good you can see that the fps is just perfect at at the local step size of one but you know the effect obviously doesn't look even close to as good as it did so you know you could try one is the best looking one actually i think you can go even lower you can probably go for a 0 0.5 but now now your performance takes an even higher hit so yeah uh the more you do it oh now it's pretty much dead <laughs> So uh, yeah, let me just go back to what it was. Uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of how you set this up. And that's about it, really. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. It was, I think, straight to the point, and it pretty much emphasizes what you need to do to get, uh, you know, Unreal Engine, VDBs, Embergen connected, and get some really cool animation done, some explosions, some effects. You can do fluids in some cases. You've got smoke, you've got 
clouds, all sorts of things. So consider uh, giving it a go. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoy the content. I would like to thank you to my, you know, uh, uh, a heart, uh, heartwarmingly uh, thank you to my Patreons, the Creo members, the YouTube members. Uh, you guys make it all possible, possible and, you know, I, I really appreciate that. And I can continue on with my coffee drinking, which I very much enjoy. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, just for the price of a coffee, you guys can get all my projects as well if you'd like. So please consider that. Um, and uh, I also do um, a coaching on Patreon. If you're interested, have a look at the tiers in there. I think they're I think they're worth it if you guys want to learn some things about Unreal or Blender that you may not know. So uh, yeah, uh, see you guys in the next one. Keep creating.